inauguration of President-elect Donald J. Trump. From the moment we learned that he had won in the middle of the night on November 9th in the early morning hours, I knew that they would try to overthrow his election. They're going to try to impeach him. They're going to try to dig up dirt. They're going to try to kill Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a nationalist. Donald Trump is an anti-globalist. Now, the new Soros push is to say he's betraying people when there's not any real evidence of that. The real proof will be when the rubber meets the road coming up January 20th when he enters office to see what he actually starts doing. Securing our borders, cutting taxes, going after ISIS, things like that. Um, setting up fairer trade deals. And we have massive leverage because all these deals are one-sided via globalism to deindustrialize us. That's the admitted plan. So he's got such an enemy force arrayed against him. Hillary, who said she would accept the results, has now come out and joined the recount with Jill Stein. He's got such a force arrayed against him. I'm fully backing him until he gets into office. Then, if things go sideways, I have nothing but integrity. I will, sadly, be very painful, uh, start exposing what's going on. But, but that's cart before the horse. Here's what we know. And there's so much today we're going to cover. This is probably one of the most important broadcasts ever. I tend to say that more and more because there's a quickening and acceleration happening. Jill Stein is calling for a recount in five states that are all battlegrounds Donald Trump won. That's completely transparent. Bev Harris and other top election fraud experts who are bipartisan, and she's a liberal. Most of her team are liberals, but they're real liberals. They just go where the facts are. They said all the evidence is showing fraud against Trump across the country. But his landslide was so big, he won. She's lately exposed that Al Gore was robbed. And you know what? I didn't like Al Gore, but I went with that because the evidence was there. I covered it. Al Gore got robbed. I don't know who'd be worse, though, him or Bush. The point is the facts are the facts. They tried to steal it from Trump. Now, Trump doesn't want to sound like he's a sore winner and come out and say that. But I said weeks ago, he better do it. Because they're blaming him when she's only doing, he, he called it a scam to raise money, and that's part of it. No, it's a scam from Democratic Party donors to make Trump look illegitimate to cause a civil war in this country. And I said that last week. I said that uh, Monday and Tuesday before I went to Thanksgiving. And now Fox News is saying that. And again, I just, uh, I make that point because we're the trailblazers here. We'll say things that are obvious before other people will because they want to go along with the establishment narrative. They think that's how they get ahead. Now, that said, Roger Stone's going to be popping in uh, in the second hour, and I'm not going to get into all the inside baseball, but believe me, it's very interesting. I'll just leave it at that. But somebody has spent quite a bit of time with El Presidente. Um, but we're going to get into the recount, Mitt Romney, what's really going on. It just I've talked to him hours the last few days. This is going to be important in the second hour, former head of Trump's campaign. Kind of that wild card that uh, Trump keeps under the table. Pun intended. Now that said, quite frankly, all that news pales with what I'm going to come back with on the other side. We're one of the first groups in the WikiLeaks uh, back in early November, the first few days of November, to expose the Satanism and the occult and the code words for pedophilia. These are admitted law enforcement code words that were being used in the emails. Did people accidentally use these? Did, did somebody in the administration set folks up and say, use these code words for something else? And they're talking about something else? I, I mean, that might be it. I'm not making excuses for it, but this is a real radio broadcast and over 230 affiliates, way bigger than the BBC online, according to Quantcast and other uh, major rating services. I'm just not going to go on the air like some Reddit poster can do. I'm not bashing Reddit posters, but and just say this person is a pedophile or this person rapes children. So I've seen this criticism that we're not covering Pizzagate enough, even though we covered it every day. But that's how little people on the Internet just feel big. They just say, Jones never exposed the Federal Reserve's private. Now, I'll say this. I went back and looked at it more because it's so sickening. I don't like to even hard to look into it. And I've been busy with other big news. But it is big. And we got big breaking news on Pizzagate. So stay with us. Hard to believe we're about to enter the final month of 2016. And uh, old November is long in the tooth. It is the 27th day of November 2016. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you for joining us on this live Sunday edition. I'll be back tomorrow. 
Lord willing, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time with the weekday broadcast. That's 12 noon to 4 p.m. Eastern. You can find the free apps with video feeds and more at Infowars.com forward slash app. We also have a paid app for exclusive videos, uh, commentary, analysis, and more. You'll also find it at Infowars.com forward slash app on your droids and iPhones. We also have the uh, six, seven-year-old uh, iPhone app that's still super popular, over two and a half million downloads that just has a news feed and audio of the show. It's an oldie but a goodie and very popular. That's at Infowars.com forward slash show where you'll find the free video feeds, audio feeds, and more. That way, if you're listening to us on a local AM or FM station in your area, don't just spread the word to locals, which is very important in this fight against the globalist, but also call your friends, your neighbors, your family, people in other cities, other states, and say, listen to Infowars.com. It's got Hillary and the globalist and the entire establishment hopping mad against it. Find out why they're trying to openly censor it at Infowars.com forward slash show. All right, let me tell you what's coming up today. There is a lot. Uh, we have the Democrats organized with Hillary trying to overturn the election of Donald J. Trump. I don't like to say, see, I told you so, but when I left Tuesday, at the end of the show, I said repeatedly, this is real. This is a real threat. The Democrats are behind it. George Soros is behind it. They're going to try to overthrow the electors. We won't know till December 19th or the 20th if they're able to do it. And the electors who represent the voters uh, of those states and who go then to vote in the Electoral College, they are being death threatened. And I mean, you think juries in, in, in gangster trials get messed with. They are getting jacked with just huge. I've got mainstream news reporting this uh, all over the country. So that's happening. So you think it's Byzant Byzantine with the... Uh, primaries and the delegates and super delegates in both parties you think those rules are twisted like a barrel of snakes wait till you get into the electoral college and what's happening with the electors being death threatened and physically attacked and guns pointed at them you name it i mean this is a soft civil war going on between the dupes of the globalist and the people that are somewhat awake fighting for a future where at least we have fair trade deals not one-sided uh, screw jobs that enrich the globalist so we're going to break all this down today. Uh, we, we're now learning more that Obama and, and the Trump folks have confirmed this. So is the Hillary folks called Hillary that night at 1:30 Eastern. That's 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 12:30 uh, uh, Central. They still didn't announce for over an hour and said this is embarrassing. You're supposed to go out and concede. And then Hillary had to be sedated. She threw a big fit and went crazy. So the Obama folks coming out and telling the Hill and Bloomberg this confirms what we already knew from our sources, so that's triple confirmed now. And she went into a total tizzy because she knows Obama controlled at that time and still for another 54 days, the Justice Department, the FBI, you name it. And he was saying, look, I'm not gonna stand by you if you try to contest this and have a civil war at this point. So Obama basically flushed Hillary at that point. She attacked Podesta, she reportedly attacked others, had to be sedated and then rolled out the next day looking completely drugged out of her mind for just a few minutes and then disappeared for about a week and a half, then popped back up looking like she'd aged 15 years, completely mentally ill. So we've got that to get into. We've got Trump to pressure foreign leaders to probe Clinton Foundation. That's on Infowars.com. I was told this on Thanksgiving by one of our sources that let's just say is extremely close to the president. And look, the Clintons have figured this out, so I can say this now. I was told this a few weeks ago, and I was told this again a few days ago. What, what, what was Tuesday? That was Thanksgiving. So, so like four days ago, I was told that, hey, of course Trump's not going to go after Hillary. That's not a president's job. It'll be his AG. So what we had already been surmising is clearly the plan. And I was also told there's more than one way to skin a cat. Now, I didn't so much want to come out and shoot a video about this because it hadn't broken yet, and I almost don't want the other side to know this, even though I think they're smart enough to know Trump's playing possum with them. That's why they're trying to overthrow his election, that's why they've got death threats, the, the, the electors are being death threatened. All hell is breaking loose while so many libertarians and constitutionalists and conservatives and nationalists and folks that just want a free market system, while we're all celebrating, folks, we're far from out of the woods, as I kept saying for the last two weeks. And I've now confirmed it. Now, the New York Post came out today 
with the big headline, and they've talked to the insiders as well, and that indeed he is going to push for foreign governments to release the information on the foundation, just like we pressure the Swiss, it's all legal and lawful, to release info on Americans here that are doing illegal stuff or have illegal Swiss bank accounts or questionable accounts. You know, the, the, the Obamas did that some. He's going to legally and lawfully do that, and that will destroy them because there's reportedly tens of billions. You don't think she sold out the whole world just for a couple hundred million, do you? So Trump to pressure foreign leaders to probe Clinton Foundation. And, and notice this is all coming out now because Hillary reneged on her deal. There was word that the word came down, you're going to be left alone and as long as you behave because it'll be too embarrassing for the country, but you got to step down and shut up now or you know what else is about to come out in the WikiLeaks. Hillary didn't do it, folks. And I'm not saying that these behind-the-scenes conversations, it, it, it's like at 2.30 in the morning central, 3.30 in the morning uh, eastern when, when, when Trump finally walked out, said, sorry, folks, sorry I've been having to wait. It's been really complicated behind the scenes. It was Trump, Obama, Hillary, I mean, major deals going on. Major deals. Notice right around that time, or about a week and a half before Assange disappeared, he's never been seen or heard from since except in one phone call that sounds fake. So to say we're living in the middle of a spy thriller is a joke. This is like a spy killer to the power of 10. This is over the top crazy town. That's all coming up in the second hour as well. Trump administration will pressure foreign states, Clinton, Trump administration will pressure foreign states to probe Clinton Foundation. Another article, Trump supporters target George Soros over protests. So that's USA Today, New York Post, Infowars.com. It's all up on Infowars.com right now. So we've got that. Then we've got a really important stack of news that deals with the latest salvos to censor free speech. They're never going to claim they're censoring or shutting down real journalists. No, 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 no. They're going to decide what real journalism is. And then now that the UN International Consortia, Consortium has taken over the Internet, now this can be implemented and basically directed from The Hague. So we've got stacks of news from the New York Times, the Washington Post, RT, you name it, openly announcing, including Infowars.com, Drudge has been now added to the list. The most influential news portal in the world, hands down, breaking more stories than probably any other news institution out there of global import. They're now announcing Drudge is fake, shut it down. In fact, the new media blacklist calls it Russian propaganda. Isn't that a joke? So, guess who put the new list out? The Washington Post, owned by Mr. Bezos, a Democratic Party operative. But it gets worse. Guess where the list came from? They're fencing it, because they know they can get sued for torturous interference for this, to an unknown website, and no one knows who owns it. So this professor backs down after a week of her fake list out there. Of course, the onion isn't on it. We, we are, because we're so hardcore and so effective. That disappears. They take that down because it's such a fraud. And then now some imaginary group wanting to put their name on it is the new media chiefs. Can you say Southern Poverty Law Center? Can you say George Soros? So just some group. We don't know who has a website, and they just tell you what reality is. Now, you, you know, don't trust yourself. Don't do your own research. They're going to tell you. So that's coming up. But first, when we return... Remember all the devil worship stuff that came out, all the bizarre blood drinking and weirdness in the Podesta emails and the spirit cooking? Well, now it's exploded the last few weeks into Pizzagate, and there's shocking new developments straight ahead. Okay, so this video was on the nightly news on Thanksgiving. John Baum, one of our investigative journalists, put it together. It's five minutes long. I'm going to air it in about four minutes. And the headline is, Pizzagate is real. Only question is exactly what is it? But but something with codes is going on. Now, the New York Times and the Washington Post and every other major publication in the last few days has done stories basically saying, oh, it's part of the Russian propaganda fake news, claiming that there's all these code words in the Podesta emails. Well, if you go back to the first days of November, it was all over the news the weird satanic rituals and stuff like we'll have the kids for your entertainment 
ages six, seven, and eight in the hot tub waiting, and Obama wants sixty thousand plus dollars worth of hot dogs, and then they're getting delivered. And then you go to law enforcement sex code documents; they're using all the key codes. The codes for kids, the codes for men, the codes for women, the codes for black people, the codes for Latinas. I mean, it's it's all there, folks, right out of FBI source manuals. And so we're one of the first groups to cover it. I just said, uh, could this be code for drug dealing? Could this be code for something else? I, I don't know. It's so horrible that I just said, what is this? It's like photos of kids at parties with images of people bleeding to death with women in satanic outfits drinking blood. And, 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 and then, you know, Podesta says, I'll see you at the spirit cooking dinner. And it's the most dark form of black magic uh, that, that, that Aleister Crowley was involved in. So we covered it. And then every few days, we've had reporters cover it, new reports. I've talked about it. And I saw this meme, you know, Alex Jones isn't covering this. And I thought, you know, that really was a big area, thousands of emails. Where, where did that go? So I went back the last few days and looked at it and found out John Bound had done a report I missed. And it was just so horrifying. I'm just like, I don't see how you see anything else watching this. For radio listeners, you'll hear it and say, okay, that sounds pretty bad. But when you look at the logos from law enforcement manuals, on how pedophiles traffic kids, the codes they use, and you see the very images on businesses connected to Podesta, and then you read Washington Post articles where the Podestas are talking about how they love to photograph the naked kids in their neighborhood, and then, and then as soon as we report it, the Washington Post pulls the article the next day from like seven years ago. And then they just say, oh, it's fake news, don't listen to it. Listen, I don't know what this is. It's like you're driving along in the country and you see some rotting dead animal in the ditch. He goes, is that a cow? Is that a horse? There's like maggots all over it. It's something big. It's something dead. It's something stinks really bad. So fearing yet another witch hunt, Reddit bans it. And so I went to see how about Reddit was censoring and found yeah, Alex Jones was in there. Alex Jones won't cover this either. Well, no, I'll cover it responsibly because... There's thousands of these emails. Some of them may be innocuous. I'm sure some of the folks are innocent. Or did they give them code words to use for politics, knowing it was a setup? I'm not giving them a way out. I'm just saying, man, when you go on air and you, you point fingers at people and say they're trafficking kids, you better have your act together. Because, listen, we have due process in this country. I'm drawing major attention to this, but I'm not somebody on an email or, a, or anonymously commenting. We have, according to Quantcast and other major rating services, the biggest radio show in the world now. Hands down. Hands down. Infowars.com alone is 126 on the World Wide Web. Way bigger than BBC.com. Way bigger than NewYorkTimes.com. Only thing bigger is Drudge in news. Drudge. Now, that's a responsibility. Now, now, that said, I'm not responding to this because a few trolls say, hey, you're not covering it. We have covered it. We, we, Drudge carried our big story about spirit cooking and the occult stuff. It was the biggest story on the web for two days. We had like six million readers on our website alone. Everyone else copied it. I can't even tell you how big it is. Trump asked me, how big is your audience? I said, I can't tell you, President-elect, because, you know, maybe you have an article with six million readers, one of the biggest in a month, but everybody else copies it. We don't know, sir. You know, I'm going to keep talking until we come back to the next segment because it'll take me some time to go over all this. The point is, this is so dangerous, so big, so important. We shouldn't half-ass this and then not get it right so people that are involved in whatever it is don't get in trouble. Because let me tell you something. I got caught up in the campaign. I get caught up in WikiLeaks and where's Assange. I get caught up in all these talk of wars and the economy and who is Trump going to appoint and trying to just get tax cuts for Americans. And so I kind of you know, have my reporters covering Pizzagate, and, I, and I've mentioned it some. But, you know, quite frankly, I just instinctively shy away from stuff like this. I, I'll be watching you know, TV and flip to the channels. We'll have some special on pedophiles, and I just keep flipping. Or Jeffrey Dahmer, man, I'm not into this stuff. But, yes, I have a responsibility to cover it, and, yes, it's important. And, yes, quite frankly, now that I've looked into more of the humat indigenous research of just millions of people, it's horrible. And I couldn't sleep last night, and, you know, people want me to look into it. I may just have to take off a week and just only research this and actually go to where these places are and stuff. In fact, I'm looking at it on a plane. I, I just, just like Bohemian Grove and stuff, I can't just say something and not see it for myself. 
They go to these pizza places. There's like satanic art everywhere. There's there's art of these people where they're shoving children into women's vaginas. I can't even say this stuff on air. I mean, you know, something's going. And then they have rock bands that come play there that talk about their preference being kids and stuff. I, you know, I, I don't, man, I'm telling you, man, I, I, I like spent five hours yesterday looking at this and I feel dirty right now. I mean, I feel spiritually raped and I, listen, I, I'm not bitching and I'm not complaining, but I just can't do this this hard anymore. Okay. I just cannot continue to look at, look at Hillary and these people all the time. I just can't do it. Okay. You know, they say cops get screwed up for months when they find a cellar full of dead kids or you know, come in and they see a dead toddler, you know, that snorted a bunch of cocaine. I've got a friend who's an EMT, and he did it for like eight years. He finally had to quit because it was just like the sixth or seventh dead kid you see, you know, you want to kill their parents, you know. A pit bull kills somebody's three-year-old. You want to, you go to the house, there's a freaking dead kid. You want to kill the people. That's why I couldn't work, have that job. I get it. I, I look at this stuff, and I can't handle it. I want to buy airplane tickets. So, but get this through your damn head. I'm not covering any of this up. I never cover anything up. There's just so much evil, I'm like trying to drink Lake Superior through a frickin' pixie straw. And listen, I can't do it anymore. And then I start thinking before the show, you know, I didn't even, I'm not even doing this justice. There are thousands of mainstream news articles in England with Jimmy Savelle and the royal family and little kids they dig up on their estates and his torture dungeons and him raping dead bodies of kids and slitting throats of kids in front of the prime minister and devil worship. And they, they say it's national security in the UK and they can't even go there because it's so big. And then the Catholic Church and then Boys Town and then Penn State, Jerry Sandusky raping little kids in the field house on Tuesday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday afternoons. Field houses, when I played high school ball, were like, Airports during the day. A freaking uh, college uh, field house, I've been in one once, was, was incredibly busy during the week. So I had friends that played at UT that I went to high school with. And then later they went to UT and they invited me to see the field house once. It was just the same thing. Let me tell you, that he ran a foundation that was supplying kids to a whole bunch of people. And I just don't get it. I mean, I don't get but I get it. They're vampires that want to feed on the energy of kids. Is everybody in these thousands of emails guilty? No. That's why I try to read these thousands of emails, and it's so sick. Oh, I love the sauce on the on the on the hot dogs. Oh God, yes. Obama wants sixty plus thousand dollars in hot dogs delivered right now. That's a lot of hot dogs. Oh, these are good hot dogs. I'm craving sucking on hot dogs. It's like what the hell? You want to understand the globalists? Think of people that have no soul and enjoy hurting innocents and sucking life force out of it. That's what all the wives tell. All the old all the old legends tell us about evil people is they go after our children, and, and, and history shows that every major elite in history, once it became corrupt, set up a priesthood that sacrificed children to dark gods. And that is still going on today. Now, I want to be clear, not everybody in the WikiLeaks is involved in this, clearly. You have to go investigate it for yourself, but I will warn you, uh, this story that's been the biggest thing on the Internet for several weeks, Pizzagate, as it's called, is a rabbit hole that is horrifying to go down. Now, if you're a radio listener, this is a powerful video, but I've, I've had it reposted because, again, he finished it, I guess, on Wednesday. It went out Thursday on the nightly news that was taped uh, the day before. This is on Infowars.com. Pizzagate is real. The only question is, what exactly is it? Because I'd said, man, I hope this is drug dealing code word or something, or, you know, maybe they got the wrong manual because this is the FBI says this is, this is pedophilia manuals. Now, these are the terms they use, and then here's the New York Times. Fake news onslaught targets pizzeria as nest of child traffickers. Hey, I don't know why the pizzeria and the one down the street have symbols in the FBI dossier. I don't know why there's devil worship art on the walls. I don't know why it's connected to Podesta. I don't know why they got rock singers there talking about, you know, being, you know going after kids or whatever. This is what's going on, though. And so maybe it's just some genre they picked up. They don't know what they're involved in. I'm not accusing them of anything. The little, I mean, it's not like they look like little piggy people or anything. It's not like they fit all the cliches or anything when you go to the, just like nice people to me. But the point is, is that this is tied into Podesta with thousands of emails with, we're going to have the six-year-old, the seven-year-old, and eight-year-old in the hot tub for your entertainment out at the ranch house. They can be a little persnickety, but they are also willing and enjoy it. 
I mean, there's thousands of these. You're reading it going, what the hell is this? And you start reading it. There's thousands and thousands and thousands, and you know you're reading something real bad. Oh, I'll see you at the feast tonight. Oh, we'll have lots of blood and semen. Oh, good. And then they had like Time Magazine worshiping this high priestess the week after we exposed her about it, news, all this PR, like, oh, we'll show them. They're attacking our high priestesses. We'll just put them in the news better. Like, we're all upstanding and out in the open and good people. Look, I've been careful about all this. This is Lawsuit City. I don't know what the hell's going on with these people. I know straight up devil worship when I see it and find quotes of her saying it's real when she does it privately. Including her Ask Me Anything Reddit accounts. I mean, I know real Baphomet worship when I see it, but... Thousands of emails? I'm not ready to accuse though, these people of this. It's up to you to research it for yourself, but you got to go to Infowars.com and actually see the photos and videos inside these places. You've got to see their menus. You've got to see it all, ladies and gentlemen, and then you've got to see the FBI law enforcement manuals showing the code words that are used. And by the way, I didn't just believe this. I went to the FBI site, I went and looked it all up, and people ask, well, why weren't you on this earlier? We were on it from the beginning. We've been on it the last couple of weeks since the election, but we're fighting on hundreds of fronts here. Let's go ahead and go to the report. Pizzagate is real. The question is, how real is it? What is it? Something's going on. Something's being covered up. It needs to be investigated. So just call it fake news. These are real WikiLeaks. This is real stuff going on. Here it is. A warning to viewers, the following images are disturbing. This all began after WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange released hundreds of thousands of secret documents detailing a backstabbing Clinton Foundation, but it now appears the real truth Assange was leading us to was hidden between the blurred lines of Hillary Clinton's campaign manager John Podesta's released emails. Fast forward past John Podesta's brother Tony's casual email exchange with Thelemic spirit cooking adherent Marina Abramovic. The Rosetta Stone was needed next. A verification that high level Washington, D.C. predatory pedophiles were using a code to communicate child sex trafficking as casually as ordering a pizza. An FBI unclassified document from WikiLeaks revealed symbols and logos used by pedophiles to identify sexual preferences, to include those those who sexually abuse children, as well as those who produce, distribute, and trade child pornography, are using various types of identification logos or symbols to recognize one another and distinguish their sexual preferences. Investigators should also be attentive to pedophilia symbols advertised on websites. During examinations of computer files, investigators should be conscious of subjects who try to conceal child pornography by labeling them with symbols instead of typical suggestive explicit names. Thus, the interest in code words. Now, clues. The menu from Comet Ping Pong. Notice the symbol of the ping pong paddles and its clever resemblance to the FBI document's symbol for child love. All right, hang on, New York Times, before you declare this fake news from your ivory tower. Now look at the symbol for best of pizza, just two doors down from Comet Ping Pong Pizza, boldly using the symbol for boy lover as was recorded on the unclassified FBI document. The evidence begins to reveal that best of pizza and Comet Ping Pong Pizza may be competing for the lucrative Washington, D.C. pedophile market right out in the open. Comet Ping Pong owner James Alephantis needs to explain himself, and so he did via the Hillary Clinton colluding New York Times. But so many questions remain unanswered. Why was this said by the band Heavy Breathing performing in Comet Ping Pong? He likes the world sounds. <laughs> and little boys. And children. I think I was his manager. No. <laughs> we all have preferences. <laughs> Why is the artwork adorning Comet Ping Pong's walls at the very least so insanely creepy, especially for a family restaurant? 
Why is Alephantis so close to Tony Podesta as revealed in the WikiLeaks emails? And why does Mr. Podesta collect questionable artwork specializing in grotesque eroticism and pedophilic images, not to mention Podesta's dabbling in what appears to be cannibalistic rituals while continuing his old friendship with convicted pedophile Dennis Hastert? Why is this man wearing an I Love Children shirt in this situation? Why did you write hashtag murder next to this incredibly creepy photo you posted? Why do you find it amusing that this baby is for sale? Why do you associate with this artist? Why is any of this okay? And if these code words are eventually proven to be just another method of communication, then why did the Podesta emails mention the code word pasta for either little boy or sex 78 times? Code word cheese for little girl 85 times. And what does Podesta's friend Herb mean by this statement from a Podesta email? P.S. Do you think I'll do better playing dominoes on cheese than on pasta? According to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children and the FBI, 460,699 children went missing in 2015 that we know of. Mr. Alephantis, this isn't a witch hunt, and it isn't an attack from fake news that your boyfriend David Brock, founder of Media Matters, would have us all ignore. Either you are the unlucky victim of a fake news onslaught due to your own poorly initiated publicity, or a decades-old pedophile ring operating in the power-hoarding shadows of Washington, D.C. is about to be opened from your front door. John Bound for InfoWars.com. <clears throat> Trump won. Hillary stole five states, was ordered to stand down by the intelligence agencies or everything else is going to come out on this. If you're a radio listener, you're lucky. You didn't actually see the video. The art they tweet and Facebook is of children being murdered, cut in pieces, and raped by men with giant genitalia. So. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know anymore. But that's what they're pushing. It's what they got hanging up in there, and it's what they're doing. And uh, I, I can't go out there and investigate it myself. We've had reporters on that have been there. They say it's really creepy because... Um, I don't have the self-control to be around these type of people. So, you want us to cover Pizzagate? We have covered it. We are covering it. And all I know is, God help us, we're in the hands of pure evil. We'll be right back. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. All right, Julian Assange has disappeared. Other than one interview doesn't sound like him over a telephone. They admit the embassy is basically holding him now uh, criminally uh, in a locked-up room and, and having prosecutors uh, from Europe come and visit him. Uh, we've got that. We've got... Phil Castro dying. I haven't even gotten to that. There's so much happening. But you want to know about crazy. Matt, one of the great producers, was showing me the official Andrew Breitbart Twitter from 2011. I went and looked. Yeah, it's 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 Andrew Breitbart, the pioneer journalist who Drudge helped launch. It, it's him. And it's a comment about Podesta being a world-class child trafficker. Now, I was shown this about an hour ago, 10 minutes before showtime. I hadn't got to it yet. Joe Biggs, look at this just texted me how prong guru John Podesta isn't household name as world-class underage sex slave op cover defending unspeakable dregs escapes me. And of course, Breitbart was dead and a year later. He, had, he said he had stuff coming out that would destroy forever. Obama. And the word we had was it was all the gay stuff out of Chicago. Hey, I'm all about people having free will with adults. My thing is you don't mess with kids, heterosexual, homosexual, I don't care. Keep your hands off. But we're going to retweet Andrew Breitbart's uh, comment. Uh, triple check, that's his verified account. It says it is. That is so wild. Yeah, I mean, the Podestas are so arrogant. Part of this is doing it publicly. One of his brothers that's heavily involved in, in D.C. put out an article about how they take naked photos of the neighborhood kids and have them hanging up around their house. And that was like seven, eight years ago. We covered that, and the Washington Post pulled it. I mean, that's what I'm saying. This is so... This is so crazy. The point is, whoever that was, Andrew Breitbart or whatever, that was, that was five years ago. I want to segue into some other news now, obviously, but these are tri times that uh, you know try folks' souls. I want to get into some fake news. And, and how the mainstream media is the main purveyor of that in a moment. And again, there's some of the other news ahead of Roger Stone joining us. 
briefly, we're running Black Friday specials right through the weekend. And, and these are already great products at very low prices that everybody should want and use. Plus, even if they weren't great products, which they are, it's funding the tip of the spear that tells the truth like no other organization. I love putting people to say, hey, Alex, you shouldn't have sponsors. That's mainstream media and, and, and trolls. You shouldn't fund yourself. We have the funding of a small town newspaper, and we are bigger than the BBC and the New York Times online. Look, go to quantcast.com. I'm not bragging. It's a fact. You're getting colloidal silver, silver bullet for $9.95. We get it from the national manufacturer that supplies Whole Foods that sells it for more than $20. When it's a sale, they sell it for $19.95. We sell it for $19.95 day in, day out. Silver bullet, our private label, 30 parts per million, the cleanest, purest out there. Not yellow, folks. It's silver. That's when it's oxidized. It turns that weird yellow meaning it wasn't done properly. This is, this is pure, clear water. Ionized water with the colloidal silver. I had a sore throat a few days ago, drank some of this, worked great for me. The point is, InfoWarsLife.com, we're running specials right through tomorrow, and then it ends. The all-new Brain Force is back. It's 50% off the retail. Boom. So the specials just get better towards the end of a sale. We have free shipping that ends today with promo code FREE at checkout. That's just for folks actually tuned in. At checkout, add that. Sign up for auto ship, get an additional 10% off on things that are perishable or that you use over and over again, like nutraceutical supplements, coffee, you name it. Bio, PC, bio PCA. This sucker at $14.96. At $19.95, it's a game changer. At $29.95, it's a deal. Leading competitors have some of the same compounds in it, just one of the compounds. Now get ready for this, ladies and gentlemen for 40 plus dollars this has a whole bunch of great ingredients for 1995 normally discounted 14 dollars right now infowarslife.com infowarsstore.com again is the umbrella site take advantage of all of this black friday week free speech special 30 percent off survival shield nascent iodine x2 the good halogen go research about the iodine conspiracy the federal government's own documents that they added iodine in the midwest well, nationwide, but it started in the Midwest from the 20s through the 70s because IQs were so low, goiter was so bad, uh, thyroid problems were so huge, and IQs boosted up to 15% on average. Just Google thyroid added to salt, 15% IQ increase. But most of the iodine on store shelves will kill you if you drink it. It's for topical. This is real iodine, not bound, not garbage, not chemical iodine, not from rotting seaweed, not from, this is from deep earth crystals. Nobody else has got this. We were searching for a true iodine to put out, and we got persecuted by enemies that found out our supplier and shut it down, and then just the God dropped it in our lap, a deep earth source that we've had now for four years. What a blessing. No weapon formed against us will prosper. I want to thank you all for your support. Try Super Mel Vitality. Try Anthroplex. Try X2. Let me tell you, game changer, get ready. So many other great products, huge discounts, free shipping. Infowarsstore.com or call toll free, 888-253-3139. Okay, I have delved into Pizzagate. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and th I mean, there's thousands of emails. More than 30,000 just dealing with all this talk about, I can't wait for the succulent hot dogs. Obama wants 60,000 plus. Oh, my God, they're the best. Oh, oh, oh we're going to have them in D.C. and in Hawaii, oh, the hot dogs. Okay, Obama likes men and hot dogs. I mean, I'll say for positive thing, it looks like he's after adult men. That's legal and lawful. Uh, I mean, I, you know, and then Hillary wants this and all this crap. I mean, you cannot make this stuff up. You look at Wiener who's involved in all this. I mean, what do you expect from these people? And it's like, what? We will have the children in the hot tub. One is six, one is seven, one is eight. Some can be persnickety, but they do enjoy themselves. You know, go read it for yourself. And then you see them having rock bands play, talking about you know stuff with kids, and then kids being, I can't even say it on air, folks. The, the video, we're going to tweet it out with Breitbart's statement on Infowars.com. Dealing with Pizzagate, we're going to tweet it out right now at Real Alex Jones on Twitter, and you just send it out, send it out, because here's the deal. There's massive censorship on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook, everywhere, and I'm not just going to come out and say what all this is. They may just have, you know, symbols that look closely like 
symbols the FBI says is what traffickers have and may just have images of naked kids on the walls and may just be tweeting this stuff out and talking about torture and death of children and then may just have rock bands there talking about, you know, uh, you know your preference as children because it's just an accident. Probably is. I'm sure that's all that's going on here. See, I start down this line. I can't stop, see. What's Ben Grimm say? It's clobbering time. My instinct is, see, I'm not a killer. But when people mess with kids, it flips switches. Really scary switches. And uh, I've been doing this too long. I've seen too much. And I'm done for now talking about this because I can't stand it once I start looking into it. You go look into it. You're the human. You're the individuals. You're the listeners. Just go, go, go out and do it. Just my crew will cover it, but I just, you know, it gets to me. I already know all this stuff. I've been telling you for years there are a bunch of devil worshippers. I don't know how some people can bitch at me when I'm the progenitor of exposing what they're into. How can some general who's won hundreds of wars for everybody be bad because I'm not just constantly obsessing on something that I quite frankly can't mentally deal with? Now, let's get into the other news here. Coming up. Fake news onslaught targets pizzeria as nest of child traffickers. New York Times. Oh. Fearing yet another witch hunt, Reddit bans Pizzagate. Washington Post. Pizzagate shows how fake news hurts real people. Yeah, I'm sure you may insert in the email somebody who's innocent wasn't involved. That's not our issue. The point is this got hacked by intelligence agencies to warn the world. The NYPD has told me directly and through sources that it's horrible child trafficking. I don't know about Pizzagate in some other town. All I know is there's some stuff going on. Will they red herring some innocent group? Maybe. That's why we got to be careful. A fake conspiracy for our fevered age, Bloomberg. The same guy that says he doesn't want our guns. Is there any real evidence for Pizzagate? Reddit CEO, fans conspiracy theory flames by banning discussion of it. Yeah, shouldn't do that. I don't know, thousands of emails talking about code words and stuff that the FBI issues and says are code words for pedophilia. But let's get into this right now. Here's what's really important. EU censoring free speech with fake news claims says IFJ. We have some nebulous unnamed group that has come out. The Washington Post has now put out a new fake list. And you go to the website, it won't even say who it is, listing drudgereport.com, infowars.com is fake. And the International Federation of Journalists, very respected, has come out and said this is a way to stifle journalism. This is a fraud. And a lot of the sites listed, they're saying have done a lot of great work. Yeah, exactly. You let bad sites, good sites be there. We all know the Washington Post is fake news. CNN's fake news. And so I love how the fake news is saying we're fake news. And they're specifically crapping themselves over Pizzagate. And their answer is to say it's all fake. No, WikiLeaks released this. This is in there. Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign. And the guy that plays down his access for influence will be joining us. Uh, I've only covered a third of the news I wanted to hit so far. If you go to our Twitter, at Real Alex Jones, you can see that we're tweeting about uh, what's really going on with pedophile gate or pervert gate. But, you know, it sounds totally alien to the normal person. But if you study history, elites are always seeking after the innocence. Most cultures end up getting a weird priesthood running it that are obsessed with the sacrifice of human children. So as I said, I'm going to retweet out Andrew Breitbart's tweet from five years ago. Have we done that yet? Let's, let's scroll down. I usually tweet myself when I'm on air. I obviously can't do it. Uh, where, yeah, where, where, where reportedly Andrew Breitbart, I mean, it was a real account. Looks like it's his from five years ago. Um, talked about the Podestas and their activities. Then you find them in the Washington Post talking about how much they love hanging up pictures of the naked neighborhood kids in their house. They called it, a, what, radical art? Revolutionary art? But I'm done talking about that now. I'm going to shift gears into what we can totally prove and what we can document, and they're coming after our free speech. When we talk about the EU being unelected, they call that fake news or wanting to ban it. The International Federation of Journalists is coming out saying it's a threat to free speech. Using fake news against opposing views. I love how the Washington... Post and others have come out and promoted a new fake list. I don't even say who came up with the list. They just list some website that doesn't say who it is. 
absolutely no attribution, no proof, no bibliography. It'd be one thing if they put out a big list of fake news and then showed a bunch of examples per news agency who was fake. I called Paul Watson today and I said, I'll do it if you don't have time, but I want to take the list we mentioned a few weeks ago that Ron Paul kind of picked up on and put back out. And he said, you know, fake news is mainstream media that launched all these wars that lies to us that, you know, puts out fake debate questions beforehand and gets caught rigging everything. That's who's fake news, not us that are exposing it. But we should just put out that whole list and then just point out, you know, definitive list. And, hey, by the way, InfoWars is saying this. Here's our name. Here's who we are. But you want to wonder how they're going to strike back as they lose control and lose their grasp over the people? This is it. Tensions are reportedly rising at CNN as the network aims for Trump. Since the election, CNN has out MS. NBC, MSNBC. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. He stole the election. He's not the president. The recount's reasonable. Uh, you know, Hillary's involved now. It goes on and on and on. What a joke. The Clinton News Network. Speaking of them, the fake news, CNN accidentally falsely admitted it aired pornography for 30 minutes on Thanksgiving. Turned out it was their Boston affiliate aired 30 minutes of tranny porn. And it was CNN feed that was supposed to be there. So they just can't get anything right. But that's okay, because they're CNN. Imagine they aired 30 minutes of spirit cooking, a bunch of supermodels and people drinking blood. Uh, coming up, Washington Post, Minion, Donald, Donald Trump's enemy, Barack Obama, has uh, come out. And again, further basically worship Fidel Castro. We're going to get to all of that coming up. Meanwhile, Obama urged Clinton to concede on election night. Journalist uh, tricked into spreading hoax Trump-inspired attack. There's a video on that we're going to be getting to. And so much more. Oh, yeah. Folks, they have turned the fake news game up to a whole new level. I'm seeing quotes and things that I never even said at it's not even edited quotes. It's not even quotes where they cut stuff off out of context. They're now just putting out entirely fake quotes on us to the point of I can't even keep track of it anymore. So it really is up to everybody out there just to stay focused and to remember what you saw and what you read and to not believe anything MSM says because, you know, I bust my butt to actually give you what they said, what they did, what they claimed, who they stood for. Uh, but it is so hard with mainstream media because as they collapse, as they die, as they fail to deliver the win to Hillary and George Soros and the globalists, they're not giving up. They are just doing what they always did, but three or four times worse, hoping that they'll win. That's the definition of insanity in my book. All right, Roger Stone's with us till about 45 after. Then I'm going to hit some other news we haven't gotten to in the last segment. No calls today because there's just so much on the plate. Now, I've talked to Roger Stone off record about the weird devil worship in the Podesta emails, the weird talk about Obama wants 60 plus thousand dollars in hot dogs. Oh, they're so luscious. I can't wait to get one. Uh, we'll have three kids in the hot tub for you at the farmhouse. They're, you know, they're going to be responsive. I mean, th 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 this is scary stuff, folks. I'm not saying everybody involved in the emails are pedophiles. I'm not saying, clearly that's, that goes on in England. It goes on here. It's come out that a lot of political elites are involved in that. I brought it up to him and he, he talked about some heavy hitters that said, no, there's definitely something going on here. Uh, I've talked to people involved with the NYPD over a month ago. They said, look, that's what's being held over the head that if, you know, if Hillary tries to go forward is, is going to be brought out. Uh, Assange hasn't done a real interview. He supposedly some uh, phone interview, but it, it doesn't even sound like him in, in 40 something days. So a lot is going on. Uh, I, I wanna get into Romney. I remember talking to a little bird uh, separate from Stone, but calling Stone over a week ago and saying, I hear that uh, Conway's doing the right thing and is against this Romney deal. And then I talked to others. So, But now she's in the news today, openly coming out and saying, did Romney even vote for Trump? Uh, so, wow, I'm, it's good to see her standing up. We know Bannon's against it. Uh, but really, it's a major line in the sand for a lot of people. And, it, and it's a test of will Trump stand up for the base and what he stood for. I, I'm giving him benefit of the doubt till he gets in. That's what really matters to me. I know major enemies of this country are his enemies, so I'm giving benefit of the doubt. Uh, but because he may just put these folks in because they know how to run things and later kick them out. Trump's a smart guy. We've got that. We've got the recount that I knew was serious. And now Hillary's joined it. So Trump's been forced to actually respond to it. It was a big joke three or four days ago. It's not now. Uh, so Roger Stone, in this whole pantheon, where do you want to begin? Well, uh, 
uh, Mitt Romney is probably uh, an excellent place to start, uh, Alex. Um, uh, like you, I commend Kellyanne Conway for saying what everybody at the grassroots of the Trump movement is saying. Uh, I mean, there's several dimensions to this. Mitt Romney didn't just not support Donald Trump. He called him, and I quote, a con man, close quote, a quote, phony, quote, and a fraud. Uh, that's not like saying he's not qualified. But more importantly, his appointment would send a signal to world leaders and everybody in the United States that you can essentially dump on Trump and nothing happens to you. That's right. He's running up a white flag. He's saying, bend me over a barrel. And, and, and let me just add something to interrupt here. This is the guy that helped write Obamacare, Mitt Romney. This is the guy that ran all these pump and dumps, the guy that ran all these, uh, you know, corporate takeovers of legitimate businesses. This is the guy that, that, you know, movies like Wall Street are made about. He's everything wrong with the Republican Party. He's a slime bag. So Trump better stand up against him. Sorry, go ahead. He's the con well, man is no, what I'm saying. Not, not, not only that, but he is more... Uh uh, he's more bellicose on Russia than Trump. He kind of takes the neocon hard line. Uh, uh, he, he basically borrowed his ideology, such as it is, from the Bushes. Uh, he was not even a registered Republican two years before he ran for governor. He ran to the U.S. Senate to Ted Kennedy's left, if there is any space over there. Uh, but it, more importantly, he doesn't share the president's vision. I would say this, that if you look at it historically... The greatest secretary of state and the ones who had the most credibility in the world were the ones that had a personal relationship with the president. Baker and Bush, Nixon and Kissinger, and so on. So uh, I think that that speaks to Rudy Giuliani. Now, Rudy and I are not a perfect ideological fit. I disagree with him on many things, but I will say this. When the fight came... He gave the only fight speech at the convention other than General Flynn. And let's go further. I don't know if you can say this because I've got issues with Giuliani. He's not perfect. But since the campaign got down to the rubber meeting the road, Giuliani with the NYPD and stuff, they really came through exposing the Clintons at the key clinch moment. I mean, Giuliani really helped deliver the White House. Well, I think that's true. I also think that in terms of getting the NYPD to um, publicly lay this record out at an appropriate time, if there is an attempt by the Justice Department um, to bury it, to cover it up, would Giuliani may yet have a role to play in history. So, so you can confirm what my sources are saying, the torpedoes are on them with the emails. If the Clintons or anybody else tries anything, torpedoes will launch. Well, here's what I do know, that the, on the Monday before the election, when uh, uh, it, when uh, Director Comey of the FBI said nothing to folks keep threatening base, there was enormous pressure put on NYPD that members of the department would be indicted in the Eric Garner case uh, if NYPD did not stand down for some period of time, uh, you know, through IE through the election. But uh, the fact that the President has in the elect has that he doesn't want to prosecute the Clintons, that's fine. But it's almost outdated because I think there will be substantial, substantially more proof of wrongdoing. And at some point, the American people are going to demand, uh, you know, justice. What was sure, Roger Stone, I, I, I want to get to that. I don't want to give inside baseball out that I've gotten from my other sources but talk to you about. Clearly, it's not the president's job to go after someone. And the Democrats already know he is planning to do justice. His, his constituents demand it. Justice demands it. It was in the New York Post today. I knew this four days ago, but didn't go with it, that he's basically going to have foreign leaders, just like Obama had Switzerland exposed Swiss bank accounts. Trump is going to tell foreign leaders, do the right thing. Uh, and release the Clinton Foundation info. That's the New York Post. It's on Infowars.com. Kit Daniels wrote about it. I don't sit on news, but at, at, at a certain point, this level of stratagem, I don't want to sit there and give them what's coming down the pike, but I think they're smart enough to know Trump's playing possum till he gets in. Well, maybe this is Alex pardon insurance. You see, uh, uh, perhaps that is the, what's going on here. Trump is a shrewd poker player. Perhaps he understands that if he expressed a desire to move ahead aggressively today on the question of the prosecution, that they would get an immediate pardon and therefore would legally evade justice. So maybe, that's, uh, maybe that is what he's doing. Never second-guess him. I learned that a long time ago. Uh, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, it may be premature. Now, 
I saw on Infowars that um, pressure had been put on, not pressure, but Chelsea had lobbied one of the Trump children uh, to, you know, can't we all be friends? Was that accurate info I got from one of my other sources? Yes, it is 100% correct. I, I heard it from an additional source. Uh, so it, you know that they have a concern. You can tell they have a concern. Well, I mean, Sessions, I'm told from another source, did not take the appointment unless he could be have a free hand, and the two men really like each other. And the word is, Sessions is going to have a true free hand. Yes, I think that's true, which, uh, which in one sense I'm happy because Come for an older man on the question of legalized marijuana um, <coughs> cause havoc to uh, suddenly enforce the federal law in the states that are already legally uh, have been. Sure, I don't agree with Sessions on the whole drug war thing, but well, you, know, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're going to break here in a few okay. minutes. Looking at this then, and we'll, we'll, uh, starting to get into this now, we'll get into a recount coming up in the next segment. From what I've seen in the tea leaves in the news, with Bannon coming out public, with Conway coming out public, uh, obviously myself and others coming out public, uh, I mean, it looks like Trump is getting the fact that Mitt Romney is really like a turd in the punch bowl. Uh, this point, it has not gotten rave really reviews from the uh, from the uh, grassroots. The real question, of course, is where is Reince Priebus in this? Reince is, after all. You know, as chairman of the party, when Romney was the nominee, and they are close friends. So uh, he has denied to several media outlets that he is an advocate for this. But my intelligence was, I think that's how uh, perfunctory hello got to be this. I, I don't think this is serving the president well. He needs somebody who shares his worldview, and that's not met. He needs somebody who has denigrated it. All right, Roger Stone of StoneColdTruth.com is our guest. He's on cell phone. I don't know if he's out on the road or what. I'm going to try to see if he can do audio Skype when we come back. But regardless, we're going to come back with Roger Stone on the other side. I'm Alex Jones. Don't forget our free app, Infowars.com forward slash app with video feeds, podcasts, and more breaking news. And you can also pay $4.95 a month and get added a lot of special events we do uh, in promo codes and 50% off on of products across the board. You can sign up for the paid app, Infowarsstore.com. Stay with us. Donald Trump on his Twitter calls Roger Stone loyal and tough, and that is certainly the case. Great guy. Works harder than I do. It makes my head spin how at his age he can do it. He's with us for one more segment after this. Then I'm going to get to Donald Trump and a rare video from Fox 9, the number one channel in New York, uh, on 9-11 saying bombs in the buildings. Wow, just adds more credibility to Donald Trump because there were bombs in the buildings. I've talked to the firefighters. We don't know who planted them or what was happening. We just know there's a cover-up, uh, but uh, amazing. It just makes me like Donald Trump that much more. Finishing up with Romney, because your audio was cutting out a bit, uh, Roger Stone of StoneColdTruth.com. Want to add, you're now hosting a once-a-week show in the fourth hour. Wednesdays in my fourth hour. Uh, this Wednesday, you're going to be hosting for two hours. Uh, very excited uh, about that. And soon I'll be adding more, more, more shows here to my own network. I'll still be with GCN. They'll syndicate my show, but I'm going to add more broadcasts here with quality folks like Roger Stone. Uh, but just briefly, I want to get into the whole recount and the big enchiladas, obviously. But uh, I know we don't want to be wrong. Only Trump knows. But it does seem like that, that uh, the sun is setting a, a bit on Romney, or am I wrong? Well, Alex, it is my understanding that uh, Romney will see uh, the president-elect on Tuesday. So I think we will know uh, shortly, uh, but I think um, the, the, at the grassroots reaction to it is something the president can't uh, fail to be seeing. Now, uh, I'm not going to suggest what he should do, not tell him what to do, but I've outlined all the reasons here and elsewhere uh, that why Romney is a bad idea. His bellicose position on Russia, his personal assaults and insults to Donald Trump. Being fact, left, of, being left of, of Ted Kennedy. And working against us in Utah. Uh, so, uh, and I, I think Rudy would be a superior uh, appointment. If, it is, if that is the choice, then Rudy has, again... What about Petraeus? What about Petraeus? Well, Petraeus is, uh, that would be an interesting pick. I mean, it would certainly make it very hard not to prosecute Hillary going forward if General Petraeus uh, got this job because it would highlight his conviction. Well, sure, he's uh, not on, perfect, but he didn't write Obamacare and he didn't call Trump a con artist. Well, and he didn't make uh, documents available to former uh, foreign countries. 
through an unsecure server. Well, my so, word is from really high-level patriots is that Petraeus tried to clean up the CIA, and that's why they did that to him. Uh, I, I I think that he uh, probably was set up, but look, his his transgression is not nearly as egregious as what Hillary is. It's done. not one this, one hundred thousandth. I mean, it literally is like not even on the same universe. And this shows you the the uh, you know the inequity here. Uh, wasn't the lesson of Watergate that no one is above the law? Isn't that what they said endlessly? That's right. Okay, I interrupted you with that. Let's get into the big enchilada, as you were saying. What, in your research view, is behind this recount that Hillary's now joined? She swore she wouldn't join it. What's behind that? Well, Alex, let's look at this for a moment. There's two ironic things going on here. When I wrote for The Hill a newspaper a long piece on the fact that I was concerned that these computerized voting machines can easily be hacked. You were a total kook. It didn't exist. No such thing. Now she's saying that. Right. Now, suddenly, the shoe's on the other foot, and uh, they're demanding a recount. Clearly, Jill Stein is fronting for someone. She was unable to raise $5 million for her presidential campaign, but she raised $5 million overnight for a recount. Uh, it's now the 7 recount, mil. The recount is unnecessary, I guess I should say, in any two-day period. She raised $5 million in two days. This, is, this didn't come from the grassroots. This probably came from some... Hillary bot. Oh, oh they admit uh, that. And, and she's only going after states Trump won. How obvious is that? Well, but what's interesting in Wisconsin is the analysis of Nate Silver, formerly of the New York Times, who points out that the inconsistencies between the returns in the paper ballots and the computerized machines is explained by demographics, not device. Of course, rural, rural areas are more likely to have paper ballots. Uh, urban areas are more likely to have machines. Duh. I mean, I don't think there's anything to recount here. Uh, they would have to, by my arithmetic, flip, I guess, three states. Uh, and that's that's just not going to happen. I, I don't think Trump's victory is insecure any place. So this is a last-minute dodge by uh, Soros and the boys to try to hijack this. And by the way, I'm queuing up the clip of her during the debate saying she would never challenge uh, the election uh, and, and that Trump was insane. So, so how does she do this now? That, that's exactly right. That's the other half of this, which is they excoriated him for not blindly saying, I'll accept the results of the election even if I don't know if there's been cheating. And when he wouldn't say that, they went crazy saying he was tearing at the very fabric of American democracy, that he was undermining our democratic process. Sure. But now, the shoe's on the other foot. It just shows you what epic hypocrites uh, the Clintons I agree. Are. So let me ask you quick questions here. What is the real strategy? Is it just to embarrass him, make it look like he's not really the president? Or is it really trying to get the electors who admit they're getting death threatened, guns pointed at them? I mean, that's even, you know, in, in, in the New York Times, uh, World Net Daily's reporting on it. They're getting threats everywhere. And we won't know, I guess, till the 19th or the 20th of December. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that is exactly right. Look, I think this week is going to tell us a lot uh, in terms of the president uh, elects uh, appointments. I think you're going to get a secretary of the interior this week. I think you're going to get a secretary of state this week. Uh, and uh, those are pivotal. I mean, Trump has made a lot of pledges regarding, um, uh, you know, federal lands and easing up on control of federal lands. And people are going to be seeing whether he is uh, going to fulfill his commitments. All right, stay there. We're going to come back in a final segment with Roger Stone. I want to play a clip, though, of Hillary during a debate with uh, then-candidate, Republican nominee for President Donald Trump, uh, breaking down election results. Here it is. Well, okay. Chris, let me respond to that because that's horrifying. You know, every time Donald thinks things are not going in his direction, he claims whatever it is is rigged against him. Uh, the FBI conducted a year-long investigation into my emails. They concluded there was no case. He said the FBI was rigged. He lost the Iowa caucus. He lost the Wisconsin primary. He said the Republican primary was rigged Came against him. Then Trump University gets sued for fraud and racketeering. He claims the court system and the federal judge is rigged against him. Uh, there was even a time when 
he didn't get an Emmy for his TV program three years in a row, and he started tweeting that the Emmys were rigged. Again. Should have gotten it. This, this <laughs> is a mindset. Like this, this is this is how Donald thinks. But they're in and Hollywood. it's funny, but it's also really troubling. Okay. Now, that is not the way our democracy works. We've been around for okay, 240 years. Okay, so Roger, we're going to break years. in 40 seconds, but I mean, this is just outrageous that she's joining this whole deal. Again, what do you think they're really trying to get here? Um, I, look, I think it's a last-ditch effect. Maybe they are concerned about going to jail. Maybe they aren't really buying the assurances of the president, which I think are uh, heartfelt to try to heal the nation, but probably premature in view of the fact that we don't even have a catalog of their crimes. Uh, these people are, you know, they're, they're operators. They're grifters. They will never, ever give up. And Soros is not going to abandon his uh, his goal of... That's right. Dumb. They think we're all dumb and they're never going to give up. we got to run them over politically. Roger Stone's our guest. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. They're censoring that site. They don't want that out. They're attacking it. The president's attacking it. Hillary's attacking it. Spread those links, folks. It's coffin nails politically to these dirt bags. I'll be back tomorrow, kicking off 11 a.m. Central, 12 noon Eastern for the four-hour weekday transmission. I cannot stress to you that I'm not trying to act big here. Everybody knows it. The president's attacking us as fake news. The New York Times, the Washington Post, the Sydney Morning Herald, the BBC. They're really freaking out because Infowars.com, according to Quantcast and Google Analytics, is the 126th biggest website in the world. And it's only 20-something percent of our reach every day. We're huge on Facebook and, and Twitter and Google and YouTube. And I tell people during the election, we had 85 million people conservatively watch the videos, the live videos, the tape videos. We just counted them up that week just on our own platforms and a few others. We, we, we can't add them all up. There's too many. The way the Internet works. Uh, terrestrial radio went from 3 million a day to like 5 million a day. Now that went down a little bit since the election, but it's still a whole new plateau of 40 million video views a week, 20 million radio listeners a week. I mean, we've gone to like 200, I think it's like 50 something affiliates. I'm cutting affiliate agreements and new, and new promos for stations every day now. I'm not bitching, but boy, let me tell you, it's taking my life over. So InfoWars and its success is only an example of the vacuum mainstream media left open. It's not that I'm that good. It's that they're that bad. But I'm going to tell you who is good. It's you, the listeners. Um, you are amazing. I want to thank you for your support. Keep spreading the word. We're having a huge effect, but the fight has just begun. Roger, in the time we've got left, I want to thank you. I know you're going to be uh, co-hosting some this week, doing a lot of great work uh, here uh, uh, with the syndicated radio show. But I want to move through a bunch of points now with you. But before I get into... Fidel Castro, before I get into uh, Sheriff Clark as the head of Homeland Security, who I think would be a great guy, before I hit a few other pieces, anything else, any other tidbits you'd like to talk about that I haven't raised? I mean, Alex, you pretty much covered my agenda. I'm uh, trying to chart this transition very carefully. Uh, and uh, I think it is uh, also the inaugural committee is going to get off the ground this week. Uh, and it's still a very exciting time with a lot of uh, intrigue as the establishment uh, types try to invade the new administration. So far, I think they have been fairly unsuccessful. So the neocon boarding parties, as you call them, have been repulsed? Well, it's not over yet. I mean, it's never over till it's over, and Trump has to form a, a full government. We shall see how that works out. All right, then getting to my questions. Uh, what do you make of Canadian... Prime Minister Trudeau worshiping Castro. I don't know if you saw it. We have a clip of it. I'm not going to play it because of time constraints. Just saying he's the biggest. The guy's an icon. The guy was amazing. Uh, he didn't kill most folks, you know, like other communist regimes. He only killed a couple hundred thousand. But he did terrible things. Uh, he, you know, he lived like a king as his people became poor. Uh, I mean, to watch these leftist politicians worship Castro makes me sick. Yeah, look, the guy was a mass murderer. Uh, he was a tyrant. He was an oppressor of Christians and gays and women. He was a thug. Uh, and now, frankly, we had a whack Raul. I mean, uh, this doesn't mean democracy comes to the island. All it means is that Castro finally is dead. This guy almost made it from Eisenhower to Trump. It's uh, quite a run. Imagine how it feels to see from France to you name it, leftist politicians like Hollande way behind in the polls, uh, Marie Le Pen way ahead. Uh, you know, the media is saying, oh, it's the Trump effect. Isn't it really the national? I'm gonna, I mean, I want to give Trump credit, but isn't it the nationalism, the global awakening to globalism? Isn't that what we're seeing? Take everybody to power? 
Well, I think it it is uh, it is both things. I think in this country it is uh, widespread unhappiness about the two party duopoly and the policies that have driven us into the ditch. And the people were just ready for something new. And the mainstream media miscalculated enormously. Their attempts to discredit and destroy Trump only made him stronger. Classic jujitsu. Uh, I'm going to reveal all of this in my upcoming book, The Making of President 2016, How Donald Trump Orchestrated an American Revolution, which will be out actually from Skyhorse. Uh, on Inauguration Day. There's no doubt if he is the real deal, which I think he is, this will be the second American Revolution. And by the way, I've already put in the biggest pre-order Sky Horse has. We will have it here, folks, and then I'll support the broadcast. But I'm told this book is going to be legend. Uh, I, it's, it's just amazing. Getting back to inside baseball, I haven't asked you this question. I was told this by another source that Obama actually called Hillary that night, and, and, and then she blew up and had to be sedated. You told me about her having to be sedated. That came out even in CNN a week later. Uh, Obama urged Clinton to concede on night of election. Is that what you were told, or have you heard this? Uh, I have heard that, um, and I think they were going by the returns that they had. This new confection coming out of uh, Jill Stein, I mean, I just don't know that there's enough evidence to justify a recount. But when I talked about my concerns about the system, I was derided by, as a crank. When I talked about the fact that these machines could be inaccurate, I, I was uh, treated like uh, some kind of pariah. You may remember Media Matters called on the Hill to never publish another op-ed. Oh, I know. I was because... I was there with you. We we but listen, that's discredited media. I mean, it's it's you know pox upon their houses. So so even Obama has basically split with the Clintons. More and more, I'm told they're totally alone. They're completely freaked out. I think they realize that their day is coming. Uh, I think that is true, and they're they're embattled. I mean, this is going to be a long haul, but I think we have to continue to make the case. We are a nation of laws, not men, and sure. the grand jury should make this invest this decision. Well, Alex, I got to run. Many thanks. All right, thank you. There goes Roger Stone. Uh, we're going to go to break here in a few minutes. Uh, there's so much to break down, so much to go over. Um, this whole Fidel Castro thing. Yeah, the guy was a man's man. He was iconic. He wore two Rolexes on his arm. Who else does that? You know, to see a communist actually go out and fight himself. I mean, I'll give it to Castro. You know, he was a great speaker. He was a good-looking guy. Uh, he was a prolific reader. He also tortured and murdered over 200,000 of his own people and, and, and imprisoned millions and lived like a king while this was all happening. He was a dirtbag. Now, on the pile of crap that is communism, he was, you know, one of the smaller, smaller piles of crap. But who do you think Roger Stone's talking to? I know who was calling him in the last 20 minutes of the show. He had to go when the call came five minutes early. I know. I'll get to hear about it after the show ends. Not bragging. It's just weird inside baseball. I wouldn't care if it was some globalist he was talking to, but if he's talking to the real deal, that's something different, isn't it? Um, so Castro, U.S. thorn in cyber 50 years, who survived 638 assassination attempts. Uh, they admit they tried to kill him at least 15 times. I don't know if it's 638. That's getting a little ridiculous. Inside Fidel Castro's life of luxury and ladies while country starved. Well, at least it wasn't little kids. That's the New York Post. I'm not defending him, but... <sighs> Cuban communist icon Fidel Castro dead at 90. Breitbart got it right. He was an icon. Listen, one good thing about Fidel is that Che Guevara, who's the communist poster boy, was there in the late 60s and talking crap about poor people and how stupid they were and how people that were part black weren't humans and how the Mesoamericans were, quote, cockroaches. And reportedly, Fidel Castro backhanded him and broke his nose and said, that's the end, get the hell out of the country. I mean, Che Guevara was a piece of crap, folks. He wrote books, you can pull them up, there's screenshots in Spanish talking about how Mayatas are retarded and dumb and how the, the, the damn Mexicans wouldn't get behind what he was doing because they were too stupid, you know, and all this crap. I mean, he was a real racist, folks. And, and, you know, here's my complaint. Whites now, demographically, are the 16th most unsuccessful group with only blacks behind us. I feel bad for blacks being one of the most unsuccessful demographic groups. Native Americans are number 18 behind blacks. They're the most unsuccessful. I'm part Native American. I feel sad for that. I'm not pissing on people to say that, but man, to constantly hear how I'm running things and how 
and how I'm screwing everyone over when the Chinese and the Indians and the, well, they're like two and three. Who, who's number one? Um, the Lebanese. You don't hear about like, oh, Lebanese privilege or Chinese privilege or Indian privilege. These people work 20 hours a day. They save their money for decades. They live 10 people to a house when they're already millionaires to buy as much as they can. I'm just sick of hearing that I'm a bad person. Are there a bunch of white people living off their grandparents' wealth? Yeah. But I watched the decline of white people. Let me give you the decline of white people. White people don't have kids, man. You're not having kids, you're dead. And I'm not bashing white folks. I'm just sick of hearing how we're the problem all day, but I've got all the demographic numbers. We'll be back. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. Okay, so I have told folks with the Trump operation, not Trump, that uh, over a week and a half ago, I said, look, they're starting recounts. They're saying that you didn't win the popular vote. They're going to come after you. More than 3 million illegals voted. More than 3 million dead people voted. It's like 7 million you added all together. That's admitted, even mainstream news. You've lost by 2 million, they're claiming. Even in states that, that don't have uh, electronic voting, they're putting out fake numbers like Michigan. You need to watch out. This is real. Like, oh, we won. That's a bunch of bull. Well, now Trump knows it's serious because they mean business. He's 54 days out. They can stage false flags, race riots. I mean, they are pulling out all the stops, people. They're, they know Trump's for real. They're, they, uh, things are in more crazy now than they were. We're actually winning. I didn't even know this happened. He tweeted about an hour ago. Kit Daniels has written about it. We're going to add two videos I shot a few days ago, but also a few weeks ago, where I said Trump won the popular vote. And now Trump's come out and pointed that out. Trump, I won popular vote if illegal voters excluded. That's on Infowars.com. We need maximum coverage of this article. President-elect Donald Trump had this to say in response to the ongoing Democratic push for an election recount. Limits to only states Trump won. Yeah, again, only the states he won. And he went on to break down that all the illegals and dead people voted. And if you count them out, he won by six, seven million votes. Take two million out, he won by five million votes. That's up on Infowars.com. We're going to add these two videos that I shot on Monday. There they are. Proof Donald Trump won the popular vote. And proof Donald Trump won popular vote. Dems trying to oversee, uh, overturn election. And what happened is I shoot a tape feed so I, I can add documentation and also shoot a uh, live feed of the, uh, of the tape feed. One's got 100,000 views. One's got a quarter million views. These things need 10 million views to counter the globalists. So there you go. I haven't even gotten into where Julian Assange is and how suspicious this all is. WikiLeaks admit he's he's on house arrest now. They basically got him locked up there at that South American uh, embassy in London. So all that's coming up tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Time. But this article, Trump, I won popular vote if illegal voters excluded. That is exactly what happened. And then you had, you know what, let's add the Bev Harris uh, interview November 9th where she broke down that uh, Hillary tried to steal an election but failed. I should probably change the headline because it was like Hillary stole five states but Trump still won. But, but let's add that video too because this is key intel for Trump and his people. They have got to get ahead of this. They're trying to delegitimize folks. One of the biggest landslides ever. Hillary was involved in fraud everywhere. Bev Harris is a big liberal. She only tells the truth, folks. She, she's exposed Republicans' crap. Over and over and over again. And she came on my show the day after and she said, look at all these anomalies. Uh, five states where, you know, it was very close margins. 100% in some areas voting for Hillary. That's, that's BS, folks. And it's all late at night, right when they're trying to stuff everything. And they tried the same thing in the battleground state she lost, but his, his tsunami victory was so big they failed. Man, that's amazing. So that's up on Infowars.com. Let's get this article out to everybody. This is big news. Let's go to DrudgeReport.com because he's got the headline. She's back. The Globals were just plotting a week ago for their survival now. She's back. Looks like she, uh, you know, she's dying. But it's okay. She's back in the recount. Something she said she'd never do because there's no such thing. She is back, ladies and gentlemen, with a vengeance. Never going to stop like the Energizer Bunny. The gift like herpes that just keeps on giving. Clinton campaign will participate in Wisconsin recount. 
with an eye on outside interference. Lawyers say, I told you, the Russians did it. That's right, they can barely run their own country. They got Soros trying to collapse them. But the Russians, I was in the New York Times, like, InfoWars is run by the Russians. Boy, I sure wish they were running things. Where's the paycheck? Where's the money? I got to go out and figure out how to raise it with great products. It's still hard. By the way, we end the free shipping with promo code FREE at checkout, InfoWarsStore.com. And we've got 50% off Coil Silver, 30% off Survival Shield X2, 50% off Brain Force, the great nootropic, now 20% more each bottle. Great products. You really stick a stick in their eye when you support us. InfoWarsStore.com, again, is the main site. InfoWarsLife.com is the supplements. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Whether it's a Bill Clinton's a rapist shirt or Donald Trump's my president shirt or whether it's non-GMO heirloom seeds at incredibly low prices, it's all there and funding our operation is key to the fight. So I want to salute and thank all of you who aren't just watching football tonight but are tuned in, actually caring about freedom. I want to thank our crew, our affiliates, everybody. You're amazing. Now, speaking of amazing, I was sitting there on Thanksgiving evening thinking about Donald Trump and his wild card, his Trump card of exposing government-sponsored terror and how the Republicans and Democrats work with the Saudis on 9-11, knowing I've talked to congressmen and women and black ops commanders and others about what's in the 28 pages. They've said what's in it, that our government stood down on 9-11. Well, FBI agents said that at the time. They were in the newspapers. They're like, well, they, I thought the FBI's corrupt. No, they're agents on average aren't, but the top is. This all came out in the news, folks. I was on the radio then. I covered it every day. And then out of Fox 9... That is, that is in New Jersey and New York, the top station. Trump on 9-11 said there had to be bombs in those buildings. If he was an insider, folks, the word had gone out to cover up the bombs. The firefighters exposed it. The police exposed it. I've interviewed firefighters, police. I've interviewed a deputy police chief. I've interviewed a deputy fire chief. Leanne has as well. One of her interviews has 6 million views. Look it up for yourself. So it's a big deal to have him doing this. It just signifies how independent he is and how he's his own man and why that pisses them off so much and why that scares them. So here's Donald Trump on bombs inside Tower 1 and Tower 2 on September 11th, 2001. Great. Donald, you, you're probably the best known builder, uh, particularly of, of, of great buildings in the city. There's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation. And it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole in the steel. And this is steel that was, you remember the, the width of the windows in the World Trade Center, folks. I think, you you know, if you were ever up there, they were quite narrow. And in between was this heavy steel. I said, how could a plane, even a plane, even a 767 or 747 or whatever it might have been, how could it possibly go through the steel? I happen to think that they had not only a plane, but they had bombs that exploded almost simultaneously. Because I just can't imagine anything being able to go through that wall. Most buildings are built with the steelers on the inside around the elevator shaft. This one was built from the outside, which is the strongest structure you can have, and it was almost just like a uh, like a can of soup. You know, Donna, we were looking at pictures all morning long of that plane coming into uh, building number two, and when you see that uh, approach the, the far side, and then all of a sudden, within a matter of a millisecond, the explosion pops out the other side. Right. I just think that there was a plane with more than just fuel. I think, obviously, there were very big planes. They were going very rapidly because I was also watching where the plane seemed to be not only going... All right, the full thing is up on InfoWars.com right now. By the way, I, I was just sent a tweet by one of our crew members, Matt Taibbi, who told us the Federal Reserve was private and won a bunch of prizes, told us big banks were reading the stock market. 
and interest rates. Oh, my God. They told us the sun. Oh, Matt Taibbi, Rolling Stone. Oh, my God. I'm like hundreds of times bigger than you on uh, the Internet, according to Quantcast and others. Oh, but Matt Taibbi is so celebrated. He's come out with all his tweets. I guess he's got a new payroll boss. He says, Alex Jones thinks jukes boxes make frogs gay. No, I talked about a New Scientist article about the chemicals in the plastic making humans asexual and screwing up reproductive stuff. But just, just say about juke boxes make us gay. Uh, yes, Jones really scooped us on the government uh, sending tornado steering weapons. Never said that. Made up. Lady called and said, could this tornado Oklahoma City be steered? And I said, Weather Channel admits weather weapons, but no, not tornadoes. Lie. Uh, President Trump also wants, and, and then he goes on to say uh, in the tweet I saw that we're going to have four years of Alex Jones in the White House. Just another butt hurt lap. Here it is. Congratulations, America. You've turned the presidency into four year Alex Jones broadcast. The arrogance of these people. Make up whatever you want, jackass. Our audience is hundreds of times bigger than you, buck tooth. You damn arrogant son of a bitch. You think just because you run around all arrogant means you run the world. Real men just showed up. Get ready for it. You're going to have a real problem with it. Listeners, I love you. Spread the word. Infowars.com. They hate it. Spread that link. We'll be back tomorrow at 11 a.m.